you just brought a brand new laptop and with back to school season right around the corner, now is the perfect time to make sure it's running at its best. You see, buying a laptop is a huge step. You've done your research on what works within your budget. Is the hardware capable enough to run all the apps that you intend to plan to use for school? It's a pretty big investment and unlocking its full potential for performance, wireless range, display quality, battery life, and more takes some fine tuning. Plus, setting it up with the right apps to boost your productivity is key. Trust me, I'm not going to bore you with all the subscription apps. All of these are going to be free. So I'll be walking you through the entire process from setting up to having it all said and done. And this pretty much applies to every single laptop that's out there as long as it's running Windows. But for the purpose of this video, I'll be using Acer's new Swift 14 Edge AI. Everything has to have AI on it. But uh, yeah, thanks to Acer and Intel for supporting us with this uh, project. But before we get into the details, let's unbox this thing. Before powering on your laptop, plug it in. You don't want it shutting off halfway through your setup. Turn it on and wait for the setup screen. Now, you want to select region and then the preferred keyboard layout. Here's where Microsoft tries to sneak in the account sign-in process by asking you to connect your PC to a Wi-Fi network. Don't fall for it if you prefer a local account. Instead, press Shift plus F10 and open the command prompt. If it doesn't work, your function keys may be set as primary, so try Shift plus function plus F10. Now, in the command prompt, run this bypass command to enable local account setup. Now, this step bypasses the Microsoft account creation or login process. All you have to do is enter your username and password, skip the promotions and disable tracking features like advertising ID, inking, typing data, diagnostics and location services. And just like that, you should be on the desktop in no time. Once you've hit the desktop, connect to the Wi-Fi network and immediately run Windows Update. As you can see, I have a laundry list of updates for this laptop, so I'm going to go ahead and update them. Now, this could take up to five minutes or maybe even more, depending on the strength of your Wi-Fi. Okay, future Eber here editing this timeline. I just realized that before embarking on all these updates, I would recommend checking around to see if there's any news about recent updates because I have a great example. Recently, Microsoft just rolled out an update that specifically ends up breaking up SSDs, which is not great. You don't want to lose all your data. So look around and you can find that particular update, remove it from your queue, and then proceed with all the critical updates with your drivers and all that's necessary, specifically security patches. Those are important. But yeah, I would just do your due diligence, make sure that nothing really sticks out as problematic, and then remove it from the queue and you should be good to go. With the updates completed, you want to make sure that your existing BIOS is up to date. Now, this is crucial since it can sometimes improve the performance of your laptop. We've actually seen some substantial battery life gains in the past. Now, there are two ways of doing this. The first option is to visit the manufacturer's website uh, and follow their update guide. Or the second option is to use uh, some of their pre-installed system utility softwares. In this case, this laptop has something called AcerSense. If you update manually, make sure that the laptop stays plugged in. This process can take several minutes and your PC may shut down temporarily, but don't panic and don't press any keys. Just let it do its thing and it'll automatically reboot and take you to the desktop. This next step is one of my favorite discoveries. It's called Win 11 Deep Bloat. Now, I actually found this on GitHub. It's a lightweight PowerShell script that removes bloatware. It disables telemetry and restores uh, classic Windows behaviors, which I absolutely love. Now, to run this, you can open PowerShell as an administrator, and you can copy and paste the command from the GitHub article. I'll leave a link down below. I prefer manual for more control, so I would remove things like suggestions and ads in the Start menu. Uh, you can also enable dark mode directly right over here. Uh, also, a bunch of other unused apps can be eliminated and some other social media applications that might be pre-installed with your laptop. And this is important. You can also restore the classic Windows 10 right-click context menu. I'm also going to turn off mouse acceleration. This is a must for accuracy in gaming and editing. Also, I like my taskbar on the left-hand side. Luckily, there is an option to off for that. I'm also going to disable widget services and hide that icon from the taskbar. I like to set the file explorer to open this PC by default. This is super useful, especially when you have multiple drives plugged into your PC. Uh, I'm also going to enable file extensions since I work with different kinds of files from .mp4s to .dot. PSDs to done SVG files. So this is super helpful. Uh, once you've completed these questions, all you have to do is just hit enter and it'll perform all the changes that you requested. You'll notice that the desktop will blink for a sec, but yeah, 
it looks like the taskbar is on the left hand side. The old school context menu is back. Now, Win11 Deep Load won't catch everything. You might still need to manually uninstall applications via this command over here. And you can see, for example, McAfee, along with its own web advisor tool is still here. Those need to go along with some other Acer related apps and a bunch of different promotional materials. I mean, I don't think you'd need to keep any of these. I would keep Acer Sense since you will need it to explore the power settings from this laptop. Again, this might be time consuming. It might require a few restarts, but ultimately it is worth it. I would also recommend setting up the desktop icons like bringing up control panel, trash bin, your personal folder, this PC, et cetera, all those icons back to the desktop. Now, while I'm here, I'm also gonna hide the search box within the taskbar. I don't really use it, so I don't really need it. I'm also gonna disable the notifications through the taskbar settings as well. So at this point, you should have a clean, distraction-free desktop. I don't think it can get any cleaner than this. I absolutely love it. Now, it's also important to get to know your PC. So in this case, I've got the Swift 14-inch AI. The build quality on this is pretty sweet. It's a nice little package. It weighs less than one kilos or 2.2 pounds because the whole chassis is made out of magnesium and aluminum materials. The hinge rotates all the way up to 180 degrees for easier content sharing, though it doesn't pass the one hand open test, which is unfortunate. As for the keyboard, you get a really nice soft touch keys, which provide great feedback. The LED backlighting looks better at night than in daylight. The trackpad is decent. This thing's powered by Intel's latest Lunar Lake Core Ultra 9 288B processor paired with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So you've got tons of performance, especially for a laptop in this form factor. The port selection is pretty impressive despite the thin profile of this laptop. This thing's only 0.36 inches or 9.3 millimeters thin. So you get HDMI 2.1, two USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 ports, along with two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports. You also get an audio jack and a Kensington lock. And then we get to the screen. We're looking at a super sharp 3K 120 Hertz OLED panel, but here's where the laptop really stands out. So unlike most OLED laptops that use a glossy finish that's super reflective and distracting, especially in daylight environments, this one keeps it pretty special. So you get a an anti-glare coating. And in my opinion, I feel like this is a total game changer because it means you can actually use the display comfortably in bright indoor and outdoor environments without constantly fighting reflections. On top of that, it's pushing peak brightness output of around 400 nits. You get 100% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, and it also is pretty color accurate. So you can use this for video editing, a little bit of photo editing, and some creative work as well. Now, some manufacturers ship their laptops locked at 60 hertz out of the box to save on battery life. If you want a full buttery smooth experience, you wanna change that, especially if your laptop is capable of high refresh rates. So all you have to do is just head into display settings, scroll down to advanced display, and then you can just switch from 60 to 120 hertz. You'll also notice that I have the dynamic adaptive refresh rate option enabled. Think of this as sort of like a hybrid boat that dynamically changes the refresh rate depending on the type of content that you're viewing. Uh, again, this is just done to save on battery when you're not scrolling or gaming. I should also mention that some manufacturers automatically enable auto brightness, auto contrast adjustments, and auto color profile adjustments out of the box. Now this ultimately results in an inconsistent viewing experience where sometimes the content might look just plain or flat with the colors sometimes being washed out. So what can you do to improve that? Well, for starters, uh, you can, again, head over to the display settings. While I'm here, I'm going to head over or under the brightness tab, uh, make sure that auto brightness is turned off. Night light is super useful. This essentially reduces the amount of blue light emitted from your screen, making it appear warmer, and it's just easier for your eyes, especially at night. I don't leave this on, but I rather do schedule it from sunset to sunrise. Uh, now under color profile, I just leave it at stock, but just make sure that you disable ACM or auto color management. You can also manually calibrate your display to make sure that the colors and contrast are balanced and it fits your preference. I also disable HDR. I've never really had a great experience with this setting, particularly on Windows laptops. There are just zero use cases in my line of work that it requires me to use HDR. Um, it can also help with battery life. Next up is resolution scaling. You see, laptops come with displays scaled to 125 to 200%, depending on the native resolution that comes with your PC. Now, this isn't a terrible setting since people who struggle to look at icons might find this comforting, but if you want more screen real estate, scaling it back to 100% can give you more room for applications. Now, if your laptop comes with a Quad HD or 4K display, you might want to play around with the percentage value to ensure that you're comfortably able to see the icons and texts while having room for all of your apps. For example, 3K on this 14-inch laptop at 100% 
is like, it's literally impossible to read. You'll need a microscope for that. So I switched it from 200%, which is the recommended that comes out of the box, to 175%. Um, and it just works out pretty well for my taste. Now, you might have to play around with your percentage values to find what's comfortable for your eyesight. So yeah, feel free to go to town, just find what setting works best for you, and then take it from there. Next, I jump into Intel Graphics Command Center, and the first thing I do is just automatically disable auto contrast adjustment. This setting can sometimes cause the brightness to fluctuate in weird ways, so turning it off gives you more consistent image quality. I also switched the color depth or the chroma subsampling from 8-bit to 10-bit. And the difference is that you get much smoother color gradients and transitions, reduced banding artifacts, and more importantly, noticeably better color accuracy. Uh, and this again only works if your panel supports 10-bit. To put this to the test, I ran my calibrator before and after making the change and the delta E value dropped slightly confirming that the panel was displaying colors more accurately. Given this is an OLED panel, PWM flicker does exist and it becomes problematic at low brightness levels. Again, this is a known issue with every laptop with an OLED panel, but it's only applicable to those who are sensitive to this. Now let's shift gears and discuss the different power modes built into your laptop. Every device handles them differently and understanding yours can make a big difference in performance and battery life. Now on the Swift Edge 14 AI, these controls can be accessed through AcerSense, which you can quickly launch by hitting this quick access key right next to the delete button. And right away, you're greeted with three modes. So there's silent, which keeps the fan noise to a minimum. And then there's normal, which is sort of like a hybrid. It balances performance and efficiency. And then you have the performance mode, which essentially increases the power envelope for the CPU and the GPU to yield better performance. You can actually test this out by running Cinebench 2024. It's a free application that you can use as a baseline. I saw almost a 25% jump in multi-core performance when switching from normal to performance mode. In real world tasks like Blender, it translates to noticeably faster render times with just a single click. Single core performance stays mostly the same across all modes. And when it comes to gaming or heavy workloads, enabling performance mode ensures you're getting the most out of your hardware. Now, the only trade-off, of course, is fan noise, though that varies from laptop to laptop depending on the cooling system. Thankfully, the Swift Edge 14 AI stays relatively quiet even under gaming loads. Now, here's another cool feature that was recently rolled out to Intel's Lunar Lake CPUs. Basically, the new graphics driver lets you dedicate up to 87% of your laptop's memory capacity to the iGPU. Remember, these new CPUs feature a unified memory architecture, and with 32 gigabytes of RAM on this Acer laptop, you can allocate up to 27.5 gigabytes to the GPU while leaving the remaining to the CPU. If you need apps that require a bit more VRAM specifically for running local AI workloads, this is a pretty sweet feature, and you can access that under the shared GPU memory override within the graphics tab of Intel's graphics software. Uh, you will certainly need to restart your PC for this to take into full effect. Now, going back to AcerSense and digging a little bit deeper into some of the things that come with this laptop, especially when it comes to battery care, uh, there are two options over here. So you have full battery charging, which maxes it out to 100%, or I can switch it to optimized battery charging, which uh, reduces battery age by just uh, capping or topping up the battery to 80%. I also found an interesting feature called Acer Dust Defender. On the underside of this laptop, there is a small vent that, when activated, briefly reverses the airflow to blow out any accumulated dust. Now, I can't promise if it's gonna replace a proper cleaning for the internals of your laptop. I'm not sure if it's 100% effective, but it's there. If you need to use it, you can use it. Another advanced tip is adjusting your network packet priority. Now, this controls the order in which your PC chooses different network connections. It's useful if you've got multiple adapters. For example, you have your laptop connected to Wi-Fi or an Ethernet adapter, and you want to always prioritize the fastest or the most reliable option. Here's how you're going to set it. So you're going to search for View Network Connections and right-click on the network you want to prioritize, hit on Properties, select the internet protocol version or TCP or IPv4, then click on the properties button. And in the new window, click on advanced and you can just disable automatic metric and then manually enter a number. So the lower the numbers, the higher the priority. In my case, I'm just gonna go with zero, click okay on all windows and you're pretty much set. Let's talk about some apps that can really level up your laptop experience. And the best part is that most of these are free. 
And the first thing is to start with the basics. You can use services like Google Drive, Google Calendar, and Gmail. They're all super handy, especially for students and professionals alike. Many universities or colleges will give you access to a ton of cloud storage through your school account. It's way more than what you normally get for free. So first thing is take advantage of that. If you're a fan of keyboard shortcuts and want to remap any keys, you're going to be able to do that with something called Microsoft Power Toys. So here's how it works. You download and install Power Toys. I'll leave a link down below to all these apps in the description. You open the app, go to Keyboard Manager, click on Remap a Shortcut, hit any key that you want to program. In this case, I'm going to map it to the snipping tool, which is Windows plus Shift plus S, and you should be set. Now, the features that come with Microsoft Power Toys doesn't stop here. It's actually packed with a ton of different utilities. So for example, Advanced Paste is automatically enabled. It pastes the clipboard content in different formats. You also have access to clipboard history, so you'll never lose something that you've copied. There's also Color Picker, which I absolutely love. I use this all the time when I'm designing thumbnails. Uh, if I need to just find the right tone, it just works and it's awesome. You can seriously go to town and explore this application. I highly recommend checking it out. There's a lot of gold here. Another useful application, and this is something that I installed right away when I'm setting up my PC, is Quick Look. It's a lightweight tool that lets you preview files by simply pressing the spacebar key instead of actually opening the application. This alone saves me a ton of time. Some other apps that are worth checking out is Notion. I cannot recommend this enough. It is great for organizing notes, your assignments, and projects. And the best part is that it's cross-platform compatible. So if you have an Android smartphone or an iPhone, you can just share your notes between those devices. It's pretty awesome. I also use another application called Todoist. It's a simple but powerful task manager. Uh, you can organize it by days. I use this pretty much every day if I want to get things done, especially here in the office, or if I want to grab stuff from the groceries. It's awesome. It's a great little tool. If you're looking for a powerful system search tool, I'd recommend everything. Like literally, that's what it's called, everything. It's a one-stop shop for finding files and folders. It's much faster and more accurate than Windows' own search bar. You can do things like copying the path location for a file that you want to attach to an email and just paste it on the insert file window when you're prompted to attach a file. Again, this is super useful if your desktop is just filled with a lot of files. Next up is Winderstat. This is a disk usage statistics viewer that allows you to monitor what files are eating up your hard drive's capacity, especially when you buy a laptop with a smaller storage drive. If you're running low on storage, you can easily find what's taking up space and delete it right away from this app. So with these apps, you'll have a cleaner workflow, faster access to your files, and a laptop that feels more tailored to you. But if you have any other tips or tricks to help experience Windows even better, uh, leave them down in the comments down below. I'm open to learning something new every day, and I'm excited to see what you guys have to offer if I missed out on any. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this guide was somewhat useful to some of you out there. Uh, let us know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, I know that back to school season is right around the corner, so spend responsibly.